Good evening and welcome to Rex Hunt's Fishing World on Fair W via 4PBC in Brisbane. It's 11 degrees in Melbourne and 20 degrees in balmy Brisbane. Well, tonight, having just spoken to an audience of football fans at the Brisbane Lions Football Club at the Gabba, I am, of course, just back from the United Kingdom. And as many of you were aware, I went straight into a weekend of football. However, now I've had time to take a breath, I can reflect on my trip. I did not realise the world was so big. London was breathtaking in its busyness. And for the sheer weight of people numbers... It is really quite staggering. As many of you are aware, my fishing program on television goes to 109 countries, including Europe and the United Kingdom. Now, I already knew that we had a few followers abroad, but to physically experience the response in Britain was quite amazing. Right from the start, the people at the Heathrow Airport were onto us. Oxford Street... The main drag will never be the same with the yibbity yibbity cry going down near Selfridges. And what about the guy in the Cambridge coffee shop? He got onto me and he was a tourist from the Netherlands. I feel I want to share these experience with you people who've been with me for so long. You've seen me rise above being a local reporter trying to get fishing on radio and television into what I am today. An internationally recognised angler representing this country and singing its praises. But it hasn't always been like that. You know that. Most of you know only too well what a struggle it has been. But as I said in my message to you on June 13, the fact that it has been tough makes it all the more worthwhile. As John Kennedy, the famous Hawthorne coach and now commissioner of the AFL, once said, the top of the mountain is the reason for climbing it in the first place. You people know me well enough by now to know that I'm not here to really pump my own ego up. I'm here to inspire lesser people to do their best. If we all look back, nothing worthwhile has ever been achieved without setbacks, some pain, some tears and a bloody lot of hard work. I've never seen a death certificate state, death by hard work. Bundy bundy yes, but not by hard work. By now, you'll be right onto the fact that you have floored me, totally floored me with your response to my address to the nation a few weeks ago. And despite the fact that we have sent hundreds of copies out, many people wanted me to let rip again. So I suppose we can do it. For those who did not get into the drift before, this editorial was inspired by a comment from a loser that I was lucky because I was Rex Hunt. So, folks, start your engines and your tape recorders, because, uh, yibbity yibbity, here we go. Everybody knows that the tall poppy syndrome is alive and well in this country. When you travel overseas, you'll see that other countries have a far greater appreciation for achievers than we do here in Australia. However, it seems in Australia, successful people, instead of being admired are subjected to petty jealousy from a minority of people who just cannot bear someone else's success. Now, John Laws recently said that people who want to tear you down the most are those that have failed where you have succeeded. These people are very bitter because they believe that your position should be theirs without the work. The true joy of life is doing what you love doing well. We can all do something in this life as well, if not better, than others. You must identify this skill and use it to your advantage. The best work in life is that work which is done with passion and a real commitment to achieving your chosen goal. If a man doesn't keep up with the others, it might be that he hears a different beat from the drummer. Believe me, people who don't follow the well-worn paths of life and venture into the unknown territory can have fantastic rewards. Many of us, and I'm a great example, have spent far too much time trying to please others in my life. Trying to do what someone else wants you to do is not the way to achieve in this life. Besides, you've all heard it, haven't you? You can please some of the people some of the time. Uh, yibbity yibbity folks, you know the rest. 
When I played in the golden years of the Richmond Football Club, the excitement and rewards were magnificent. We were the best team in the competition because our record shows that. Thirty years on, those days linger in my mind. But the lessons that I learnt, like spirit and the hard work ethic and the will to do my best at every opportunity, have been with me ever since and have been instrumental in me reaching my present position. We all have to take responsibility for our lives. The true joy of life is achieving what you set out to do. This is the opportunity that so many people have right in front of them. But so many don't recognise the chance because it may be dressed in overalls or disguised as hard work or effort. That's why I try to inspire the kids to have a go. At least try. There's no harm in failing. The only harm is if you didn't give it your best shot, kids. The most frustrating thing that I see around the place is so many brilliant people sitting around moping and whinging about things so petty and things so easily fixed. My message, kids, is simple. Do what you want to do. Be what you want to be. Yeah, it's a song, but it's true.